Ever found yourself pondering about the percentage impedance of a transformer? It's a fascinating concept that underlies how transformers function. At the heart of a transformer are its primary and secondary windings, made up of a multitude of turns of copper or aluminium wire. The length of this wire determines the resistance of the winding. Now, transformers operate on alternating current, or AC supply. When this AC supply is fed into the primary winding, it generates a magnetic field or flux. However, not all this flux successfully links the primary and secondary windings. Some of it leaks away. This leakage is represented by what we call leakage reactance in the transformer. So, in essence, the transformer's windings have not just resistance, but also reactance, or in simpler terms, impedance. This impedance is what opposes the current when the supply is fed to the transformer and causes a voltage drop in the winding. Now let's delve into the formula for calculating the percentage impedance of a transformer. Percentage impedance equal to Z divided by Z rated multiplied by 100, where Z is the actual impedance of the transformer and Z rated is the rated impedance of the transformer. So, what is the percentage impedance of a transformer? It's a measure of the voltage drop that occurs when the transformer is fully loaded up to its rated secondary current. This voltage drop is due to the resistance and reactance of the transformer's winding. Imagine a secondary winding rated at 440 volts that's fully loaded. If the measured voltage drop is 44 volts, then your percentage voltage drop is 10%. This translates to a transformer percentage impedance of 10%. So, when we talk about percentage impedance, you can think of it this way. It's the percentage voltage of the rated voltage that's required to circulate the rated current flow through one transformer winding when the other winding is short-circuited at the rated tap position of the transformer. This seemingly complex concept is the bedrock of understanding how transformers work and how they interact with the electrical systems they're a part of. How does the percentage impedance come into play in short-circuit calculations, you ask? Well, let's delve into that. Percentage impedance in transformers has a significant influence on the magnitude of fault current and voltage regulation. Picture this. If a transformer has lower impedance, this will result in a higher fault current. At the same time, it will provide better voltage regulation. Sounds perfect, right? But there's a catch. This scenario can lead to an increase in the costs for switchgear. It's a bit like when you decide to splurge on that fancy gadget you've had your eye on only to realize that the maintenance costs are going to hit your wallet hard. On the flip side, if a transformer has higher impedance, it reduces fault MVA which is the apparent power under fault conditions. But unfortunately, this worsens voltage regulation. It's like buying a cheaper gadget, but then having to deal with its frequent hiccups and lower performance. Just like in life, balance is key when it comes to percentage impedance. The goal is to find an optimal impedance that can strike a balance between the fault level and voltage regulation. It's about finding that sweet spot where you get the best of both worlds. Efficient performance and manageable costs. And that, my friends, is how the percentage impedance plays its part in short-circuit calculations. The key is to find an optimal impedance that balances fault level and voltage regulation. And what about the role of percentage impedance in the parallel operation of transformers? Well, transformers often operate in parallel to maximize their utility. In an ideal world, when transformers run side by side, they should share the load equally to prevent any unnecessary circulation of current from one transformer to another. When transformers work together in parallel, the efficiency of both devices significantly improves. However, for this equal sharing of load to occur, the ratio of transformer rating to percentage impedance must be the same for both transformers. What happens if they're not equal? Well, it's not a pretty picture. If the rating is unequal, one transformer will bear more load than the other. This imbalance leads to a circulating current flowing in the transformer, resulting in additional power loss and a decrease in efficiency. And who wants that? So, you see, the percentage impedance of a transformer isn't just some arbitrary number you can ignore. It's a critical factor that significantly affects the operation and efficiency of the transformer itself. So the percentage impedance of a transformer is not just a number, but a crucial factor affecting the transformer's operation and efficiency. And that's a wrap on understanding percentage impedance. I hope you found this video informative and helpful.
Don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more content on electrical engineering and power systems. Thanks for watching.